In today's video, we're diving deep into one of the most important events in Bitcoin's life cycle, the Bitcoin halving. Whether you're brand new to crypto or just curious about what this event really means, this video will walk you through the full story, from the origins of Bitcoin to what the halving does, how it affects the price, and what it could mean for the future. Let's start from the beginning. Bitcoin was created in 2008 by an anonymous figure using the name Satoshi Nakamoto. It came as a response to the global financial crisis, with a goal to create money that was completely digital, decentralized and free from manipulation by governments or banks. In January 2009, the very first Bitcoin block, the Genesis block, was mined. And with that, the network went live. But Bitcoin isn't just digital money. It's built on something revolutionary, the blockchain. The blockchain is a public database that records every single transaction. It's maintained by a network of computers around the world, and anyone can join in. These computers, called miners, are essential to keeping Bitcoin running. They compete to solve complex mathematical puzzles, and whoever solves it first gets to add the next block to the chain. As a reward for their work, they receive newly created Bitcoin, this is called the block reward, and it's how new Bitcoin enters the system. Now here's where it gets really clever. Satoshi Nakamoto built a rule into Bitcoin's code. There will never be more than 21 million Bitcoin. Ever. That's it. Finite. Scarce. And to control how fast new Bitcoin is created, there's another rule. The halving. Roughly every four years, or more precisely every 210,000 blocks, the amount of Bitcoin given to miners is cut in half. Yes. Overnight? miners suddenly earn 50% less per block. Let's take a quick look at how the block reward has changed over time. In 2009, the reward started at 50 BTC per block. In 2012, it dropped to 25 BTC. In 2016, it was reduced to 12.5 BTC. In 2020, it dropped again to 6.25 BTC. And in April 2024, the most recent halving brought it down to just 3.125 BTC per block. This process will continue roughly every four years until eventually, around the year 2140, all 21 million Bitcoin will have been mined and no new Bitcoin will ever be created again. So uh, why does this matter? Let's talk about supply and demand. If the supply of something is reduced, but demand stays the same or even increases, the price tends to go up. That's basic economics. And that's exactly what's happened with Bitcoin after every halving so far. Let's take a look at the historical data. After the 2012 halving, Bitcoin's price went from around $12 to over $1,000 within a year. After the 2016 halving, it rose from about $650 to nearly $20,000 by the end of 2017. After the 2020 halving, Bitcoin went from around $9,000 to a new all-time high of $69,000 in 2021. Each time, the price surged, but not immediately. There's usually a lag of several months, sometimes up to a year. That's because it takes time for the effects of reduced supply to really hit the market. Of course, other factors also play a role. Global markets, investor sentiment, regulation, and more. But many analysts agree, the halving has a powerful psychological and financial impact. But there's another side to this story, the miners. Remember, they're the ones keeping the network secure. When their rewards are cut in half, their income drops drastically unless the price of Bitcoin rises fast enough to compensate. This creates a survival of the fittest environment. Only miners with cheap electricity, efficient machines, and large-scale operations can continue profitably. Smaller players often get squeezed out, leading to a more concentrated mining ecosystem. That's both a strength and a weakness. It makes the network more professional, but also potentially more centralized. Now let's fast forward into the future. With each halving, the reward gets smaller and smaller. By 2028, it will be just over 1.5 BTC. By 2032, less than 1 BTC. And by 2040, the reward will be so small, it will barely matter. Eventually, there will be no block rewards at all, just transaction fees. You might be wondering, how will Bitcoin survive without new coins being minted? The idea is that by that time, Bitcoin will be so widely used, and its value so high, that miners will earn enough from transaction fees alone to stay in business. In other words, the network will become self-sustaining. Some experts worry that fees alone won't be enough to support the network, especially if usage doesn't grow fast enough. But others argue that if Bitcoin becomes a global store of value, like digital gold, 
Its role will be so significant that maintaining the network will remain profitable, even with tiny rewards. And what about the price of Bitcoin in the long run? No one can predict the future, of course. But if the trend of past halvings continues, and if demand keeps increasing while supply keeps shrinking, it's not hard to imagine a world where Bitcoin becomes much more valuable. Some believe Bitcoin could reach hundreds of thousands, even millions of dollars per coin over the next few decades. Others are more cautious. Either way, the halving is a reminder that Bitcoin's supply is shrinking permanently. So what should you do with all this information? First, don't panic and don't FOMO. Havings are important, but they are just one factor in a much bigger picture. If you're an investor, use this time to learn. Look at market cycles, study past trends, and most importantly, never invest more than you can afford to lose. Bitcoin is still a relatively young technology, and the halving is part of its unique economic design, one that rewards early adopters, limits inflation, and promotes scarcity. To wrap it up, the Bitcoin halving is a built-in automatic event that cuts the creation of new coins in half. It happens every four years, and it plays a major role in Bitcoin's economic model. Historically, it's been followed by big price increases, but also increased competition and pressure on miners. Whether you're a beginner or already deep in crypto, understanding the halving gives you a serious edge when it comes to navigating this space. If you found this video helpful, give it a like, subscribe to The Secret Wallet, and drop a comment. What do you think will happen after the next halving? Thanks for watching, and stay curious, stay informed, and stay secure.